Hi everyone, Eric Lanand here, host of the Redcast. Today we're going to be speaking with Stephanie King. She's a three-time certified Salesforce consultant, and we're going to be speaking with her about migrating to Lightning and why you should be doing it now. Hi everyone, Eric here. So we're going to be talking with Stephanie King. She's a Salesforce consultant here at Redpath. Yes. And Stephanie, if you wouldn't mind doing an introduction about yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Stephanie King. I, I'm on the nonprofit team here at Redpath, but I've been at Redpath for six years and I've worked with a lot of different organizations, uh, including several lightning migrations. Awesome. And that's why you're here, because yeah. you are, are kind of <laughs> lightning expert. Uh, so what are some of the things that you're excited about with lightning? Oh, wow. Um, with Lightning, I have to say the most exciting thing to me over and over again as I go back and, and work with Lightning with different uh, with different organizations is just the flexibility. Uh, with Classic, I mean, we all have always talked about flexibility with Salesforce in terms of what it can do in terms of um, you know capturing your and automating your business processes and, and everything. And Lightning just really takes that to a whole new level where now that flexibility is also reflected in the user interface sure. uh, with so many more options that can really come meet your business where it's at and tune it up. Cool. Yeah. Um, it's been a long time coming. They announced it yeah. a number of years ago and now it's at a place where you can migrate with very little hiccups and it opens up more opportunity to do things within Salesforce, kind of like what you're saying. So from a customer's perspective, someone that's been on Classic for basically mm -hmm. since the beginning, what does it mean to them and kind of what is Lightning? I mean, we all know it's a user oh, interface, sure. but like what does it mean for a customer? Yeah, uh, as you said, Lightning is the user interface. Uh, you said we all know that, but I, I don't know if that's a given. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because we do hear the, the word Lightning kind of mm -hmm. bandied about uh, in relation to various Salesforce products, but uh, what we are talking about today is the Lightning user interface. And so in a sense, it is important to just like hit that nail, I think, one more time and say that it really is the user interface. It's not changing anything fundamental about your data at all um, that you're tracking in Salesforce, but it is a radical change in how it looks. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so it means it's gonna change how Salesforce looks. It also, uh, I think, is important to definitely understand that this is inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't a question of, do we want Lightning Interface? It is a question of, when are we going to migrate to Lightning Interface? Um, all new development in Salesforce is happening in the Lightning interface. Classic is now uh, being maintained, uh, but there's no nothing new is coming in Classic mm -hmm. really at all. And, it's all and, status quo. Yes, and that will continue to be the case. So um, Classic will, you know, uh, several years ago, Classic was being refreshed and having things added to it several times a year. That is not the case and will never again be the case. So it will just become kind of more and more of a dinosaur as the years um, mm -hmm. advance here. All of the focus is on lightning. Um, we as yet don't have a date where Classic is going to uh, go away. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that is still technically several years out. I mean, there's a lot of organizations that still use Classic, so mm -hmm. trying to pull the Absolutely. plug on them is not exactly fair. No, that wouldn't be a, a good <laughs> a good move yet at this point. But uh, uh, just by the way things are going, you, that you're, everyone is going to be in Lightning yeah. eventually. And if you're a new Salesforce customer, you start with Lightning. So really, mm -hmm. you don't have to do this migration. This yep. this is really for customers that are in Classic that might, might want to make the switch sooner than later. And we're really pushing that now because there's a whole lot of benefits that you don't get with Classic. And right. the other point of it is... It's yeah, uh, organizations will just... I mean, you uh, if you're watching this podcast, you're probably already starting to feel those pressures mm -hmm. to migrate to Lightning, so you're wondering what it's about. Um, and you'll start to feel those pressures coming from other corners, uh, just with things like uh, apps. Um, if, if you're looking to enhance your Salesforce with apps from the App Exchange, um, as of I don't know, maybe a, a year or two ago, all apps were required to be Lightning ready on the App Exchange. Uh, and now I've seen the cases where there are apps. I just saw one a couple months ago, an app that a customer wanted to implement that was Lightning only. Mm. Um, so that was a case where they really needed this functionality, but they needed to migrate to Lightning before they could even really take advantage of that app. And and that's uh, still a bit unique, but it, it's happening and that will be more and more the case. So that's another example of kind of the pressure that you'll start to feel to migrate to Lightning. Um, 
if you are looking at training material like Trailhead mm -hmm. uh, to try to gain more um, abilities in, for managing your own sales fast force, all of that is enlightening. Um, uh, examples along those lines, just kind of the whole ecosystem is really oriented around lightning. Yep. And so on that same note, let's kind of talk about some of the benefits of lightning that you would really, it would make the case for you to jump now over to really harness some of those really new tools that you only get within lightning. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I'll just start by saying lightning is beautiful uh, in terms of design and design matters, you know, mm -hmm. um, whether we're talking about user adoption or just the fundamental usability of an app design matters and um lightning is is improved design it was really um it was designed with design in mind <laughs> um where if you look at classic there's a lot of function there mm -hmm. and then with lightning there's a lot more focus on design um, along with that is the flexibility piece so go a little bit deeper what does that mean by flexibility right um so we can just really talk about that flexibility from a lot of different angles, uh, whether it's we've got a home page where we have just so much more that we can do with a home page. If you're looking at classic, you've got about kind of five different things you can do uh, mm -hmm. on a classic home page. And in Lightning, um, you're drawing from a palette of 25 standard things plus a whole app exchange of more custom things that you can mm -hmm. do on a, on a home page. I'll say more about that uh, app exchange piece in just a minute. Um, dashboards are another one that everyone really appreciates in Lightning, um, where rather than being constrained to three columns of kind of charts that don't really move around or change their size or shape in Lightning, you can really make your charts um, the size and shape that they need to be to have that data be have the impact that it needs to, to be more legible, to be more understandable, to really mm -hmm. speak to the people that need to look at that data and understand it. Um, when it comes to page layouts, you know, you've got um, different kinds of users. You've got your sales user, you've got your manager, you've got your customer service user, um, whatever different kinds of user cases that you have looking at records um, might have different click paths that can really streamline their work within the system. And with Lightning, you can really focus and target, um, this is how a sales user needs this page set up mm -hmm. um, for really optimal use, um, as opposed to a customer service user, as opposed to a, a, an executive user, mm -hmm. um, what, what they need to see in the system. Absolutely. Um, and then I do wanna mention uh, com Lightning components um, and especially as that relates to the app exchange. Um, uh, the, the, the way that pages are set up in Lightning, uh, all of the different pieces are referred to as components, whether those are standard components. Um, and there are, there are many standard Lightning components. So as soon as you turn Lightning on, you immediately have access to, oh, I think it must be close to 20 standard Lightning mm -hmm. components for any page in your Salesforce. Uh, but now there's a whole new store in the Salesforce App Exchange. So if you've been using Salesforce for very long, you of course know the App Exchange for the apps that you can add on for added functionality and connectivity and, and all of those types of things in your org. Um, so we call those Salesforce apps. Now there's this whole other store in the App Exchange called Lightning Components. Mm -hmm where there are already hundreds of Lightning components, many of which are free at this point, and, yep. and now more paid developers are getting in on that action too. But um, from that store, you can download additional components that um, these are a little bit different than apps that kind of add functionality to your Salesforce. These components are like pieces of page layout mm -hmm. um, that that like also if have, you want a map or a heat map type of thing to do stuff like yeah that's where, a fun one <laughs> yeah i mean yeah there's there's literally hundreds right. for things for task management have uh has been a, a popular one that i've used yeah all kinds of kind of visual and functional pieces that you can bring into a page layout oh uh actually one that i'm working with today is uh, a component that allows you to upgrade your related lists on a lightning page layout um, we're all familiar with related lists imagine your contact related list on an account where um, 
whether you're in Classic or Lightning, really all you can do is look at that list mm -hmm. and you can click View All to see the whole list because it's not all going to display on that page. And then in the View All, you might be able to sort, uh, but then that's about it. Basic stuff. Mm -hmm. But this component is a free component. Um, it just enhances that a little bit where we can uh, we can have a, a larger number of default records displaying on our related list. Mm -hmm. We can have a larger number of default columns displaying on our related list. So we can just have a more functional related list to start with. Um, it also allows us to sort columns uh, right on a record page and also filter those columns oh, way cool. right on a record page. So it's it's not a big deal. It's just a, an enhanced functionality and, and that's what we get from the Lightning component. Um, yep. Store. And the, the beauty of this is if you wanted to do this in Classic, you would have to custom build a Visual Force page. Where this, right. you have a component that you can just download from the App Exchange, pre built, configured mm -hmm. on any page layout, and then you can size that however it you It becomes wish. A, just a drag and drop tool, just like the rest of the yep. Lightning palette. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So let's talk um, more about some of the benefits to consider. Uh, as someone's making the leap from Classic to, to Lightning. So we talked about the flexibility. One, one thing I think we should talk a little bit more is about you know, the flexibility of, you know, with Classic, it was just, do you want a one column or two column with your fields? Right. Now the layouts are however you want it to rearrange components. Right, yeah. Um, whether you want to reduce scrolling, uh, you could move your layout into something that leverages tabs um, to display your um, details, related lists, activity feed, uh, or whether you want to prioritize um, putting maybe a couple of visual, uh, say, chart components mm -hmm. on a page that, that give some important information to the user. Um, there's, yeah, there's really a lot of options, and, and it depends, like I said, really on your business case. Uh, as you were saying in Classic, it was really just chatter up top, mm -hmm. details, related lists. You could do a lot of things with that in terms of what you're showing, but fundamentally, that's what you, that was mm -hmm. your option. Um, and now with Lightning, um, we can show and hide and arrange things in such a way that it becomes just really a really clean... Um, interface for yeah. what your, the user needs to do on that page. And tailored to the user exactly right. how they want to use it versus everyone kind of has the same structure of the way information is displayed. Yeah, there's really no cookie cutter in Lightning, mm -hmm. uh, which is um, this is where the power is and it's also where uh, it's also the reason we're talking about lightning migration because it's not just flipping a switch and getting that new cookie cutter. It's not just a, a new cookie cutter like Classic kind of is. It's a uh, it's a whole drawer full of cookie cutters, yep. and, and uh, we have the fun of choosing the right shapes and sure. layouts for... Thanks for watching this video about migrating to Lightning Now. We hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please subscribe. You can find more of our videos on iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. As mentioned in the video earlier, we do have a guide to migrating to Lightning. If you'd like to access it, that's in the description here, or you can find it on our website. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.